Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Jolie and today is November 14th. So we're going to be reading from Ellen on literature today and um, hello to everybody and been loving reading the comments and everyone's inner, you know, interjecting and um, talking and just think that's really wonderful. And um, thank you. Thank you for um, participating and um, being here with us. So um, let's get started. How are you guys doing today? So I'll start with hope for today and then we'll do one day at a time in Al-Anon, we'll read and then courage to change. And let's see what page. I don't read these until I show up here. So I've been looking forward to this page 319 in all the readings. All right, so here we go. My sponsee and I were discussing how angry she was at having grown up with an alcoholic family. She asked me how I overcame my anger so I could have a loving adult relationship with my mom. To explain, I told her on my mini journey through the 12 steps. First, I admitted I was powerless over my childhood. The survival skills that I developed made an adult life unmanageable. So second, I came to believe that only my higher power could show me how a healthy adult behaves. Third, I made a decision to notice the people and situations my higher power put in my life to illustrate healthy behavior. Fourth, I inventoried my attitudes and actions that hindered me from having a better relationship with my mom. Fifth, I admitted to God, to myself, and to my sponsor that my anger from the past prevented me from accepting the love my mom was able to offer today. Sixth and seventh, I became ready to have my defects removed. I humbly asked my higher power to do so. The next step was easy because I already knew my mom belonged on my eighth step list. I wanted to make amends. However, the ninth step presented a challenge. Wouldn't I injure her by dredging up the past? Instead, I decided to change my behavior by accepting her love and loving her in return. Tenth, I examined my behavior every day to see if my actions stemmed from old patterns. Eleventh, I asked God to make me a more loving person, which I believe is God's will for me. Twelfth, I began carrying this message of healing by sharing my experience with others and showing how I broke out of old cycles by living the steps one day at a time. And the thought for today, the 12 steps provide ways to live a new and different life. They help me to know myself. And that's from Living Today in Alateen. And that's on page 281 in that book. This is wonderful. It's just like step by step, literally step by step example of someone's experience and um, simplified to, um, yeah, this, um, When we have our relatives, you know, our, like she's talking about, or he was talking about his mother in this, who's alive, obviously, and they want to have a relationship. So basically, I, boy, oh boy, I, before I came into this program, and before I even heard this particular reading, I always brought up the old stuff to my mom. And I'm going to, I'm going to, the reason being at the time, I wanted her to understand 
how I grew up and why I was the way I was so that I would get some type of understanding. Yet I'm an adult. And every time I would do that, she would just really suffer. She would cry. And I'm like, oh, that's not what I wanted to happen. I just wanted to talk about it so that I can, I wanted to somehow bond or be heard or doing my fourth step inventories, uh, inventorying my attitudes and actions that hindered me from having a better relationship with my mom. I see that, like I'm going over those right now so that I can accept that I can't change the past and I can't change other people. So what can I do? I could take responsibility for how I act today. And if I wanna have a relationship that's good and, and serene, then I can only come from a, a, a humble place to um, accept her love and love her in return. I can decide to change my behavior because I don't want to injure her by judging up the past. This is a really enlightening reading for me. So yeah, a tolerance, uncritical awareness of others will gradually change my personality for the better. And that's on page 246 in One Day at a Time in al -Anon. This, I, I knew like this is really important for me for my recovery. So if I try each day to put my point of view and my attitudes on a sound spiritual basis, I know it will change all the circumstances of my life for the better. I will see the results in the way other people respond to me, in the way my daily needs are met, concern, love, kindness on my part will be reflected in everything that takes place in my life. That's also from the September 2nd reading on page 246 in One Day at a Time in Illinois. Okay, all right. Let's move on to the next one. Today, the moon is in Pisces. So it has a real, uh, has that deeper feeling. You know, it's it's, a, it's a also conjunct with Neptune. So it has a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, um, of that deep feeling, lovely, um, emotions that are coming up and then with sun and scorpio and mars and scorpio it you know i'm there's some there's some pressure and stress so i hope you guys are doing okay just do the best you can you know i have to go and open and close tomorrow at that the job that's a little stressful because of the computer system and i'm like i've already gotten some nice texts from the manager. And she's like, you can do it. Just let me know if you need anything. I'm like, in my mind thinking, I need you to be there so I don't have to do it. <laughs> but I'll just do the best I can. That's all I can do. Because, you know. Yeah, so. Faith without works is dead. What did I say? That's one of the things. But for the grace of God, there go I. <laughs> so, hmm. I wrote down some things today uh, from a meeting. It was really simple, but not easy. Yeah, the work at that job is simple, but it's not easy. <laughs> Especially like it's great when, you know, like, you know, you're trying to get the people with the clothes and stuff. But then when they want to buy the stuff and they have all these different ways that they want to do a transit, oh, can you send it to me? And, or can you, here, I need the, to do this return. And then I want to, I want to do, like, it's like, and then they want you to like do it really quick. Well, the computer doesn't let you do anything fast. And so like, I'm like, Whew. there's times when I'll have 
the other lady that's there, there's my other coworker when she's there, if she rings them up or does the stuff, then I'll just chat with the customer so that they don't notice the time that it takes to do it. You know, it could take like a good 10, 10 15 minutes to get something done, maybe sometimes longer. So I'm just gonna let go and let God. I'm not gonna worry about the future. <laughs> I'm just gonna cool it. I'm gonna pause. All right, anxiety. That's definitely the moon in the moon in Pisces with the, the sun in Scorpio. Okay. Here we go. November 14th, page 319, and one day at a time in Illinois. All right, here we go. It seems strange when I think of it that God is most vivid in my consciousness when I am in the depths of despair. All I can say to God is, God help me. And God does help us when we turn to God in our great need for a person's extremity is God's opportunity. I don't understand that. Let me read it again. It says for humans, extremity is God's opportunity. I, oh, okay. If we have an extreme need, it is God's opportunity. Okay. An equally imperative reason for prayer is to acknowledge our gratitude. Gratitude is in itself a wholesome and healing force, and it becomes all the more real when we make it a regular part of our prayer. So those of us who lived long with alcoholism and can now enjoy the recovery of a loved one from this sickness have good reasons for prayers of gratitude. So today's reminder, I will keep myself aware of the many blessings that come to me each day and remember to be thankful for them. And there's a quote from the prophet Khalil Gibran, Gibran, Khalil Gibran. Okay, sorry if I didn't say that right. Um, you pray in your distress and in your need. With that, you might pray also in the fullness of your joy. Yes, pray in the fullness of your joy. I love that. Spirituality is part of in my experience is the part of the human, my human condition. It's like the spirit, the body, and the mind. Yeah. Very grateful. I'm just, I'm just like having the attitude of gratitude when I feel that, I'm like, okay, that's good. <laughs> just if I notice that I have it, I'm like, okay, that's good. I'm grateful to be grateful because I know like, okay, um, it's a healing force and it becomes all the more real when we make it a regular part of our prayers. Yes. I remember before I came into um, any type of 12-step program, um, things would get so bad that I would... I thought I had a trick where I would say, God help me. And I, I even told, you know, I was like telling everybody about it, you know, of course, cause that's what I did. I was like, I have this trick, it works. All I do is I'll look up and I say, God, please help me and things work out. So I thought I had a trick or a hack and I did even call it that. And um, so I was trying to hack my higher power. But um, now I realize that God is always there waiting. 
And um, today in the Course in Miracles on the series that I'm reading that is um, Lesson 233. And it says, I give my life to God to guide today. Father God, I give you all my thoughts today. I would have none of mine. In place of them, give me your own. I give you all my acts as well, that I may do your will instead of seeking goals which cannot be obtained and wasting time in vain. So um, it says, today we have one guide to lead us on. As we walk together, we will give this day to God. This is God's day. So it is a day of countless gifts and mercies unto us. So that's just part of it. And um, it's, it's just really, it like reinforces it, it makes that solid, solid, solid ground, solid footing, courage to change, courage. Courage to change, I've got courage. Courage to change. All right, so page 319 and courage to change, here we go. Step six talks about becoming entirely ready to have God remove all my defects of character or my issues of character. So this reading, uh, Again, this readiness rarely appears to me in a sudden blinding flash of enlightenment. Instead, as I struggle to make progress in a positive direction, I become ready a little at a time. An important part of my sixth step work is practicing gratitude. The more I give thanks for my life as it is, the more I can accept the healing that allows me to change and grow. By recognizing and cultivating my abilities, I am increasingly willing to let go of my defects. This step is a lesson in patience, but as I see my life opening up before me in new directions, I do finally become ready to have God remove all my issues of character. So today's reminder, progress, not perfection, applies to my readiness to let go of those issues that um, hinder my progress, as well as do, as well as to others, uh, other parts of my al program. One day at a time, I make progress in readiness, little by little. So there's a quote from Alateen, a day at a time. Sixth step is my chance to cooperate with God. My goal is to make myself ready to let go of my faults and let God take care of the rest. Do the footwork and let God take care of the rest. I am not in charge of or in control of the results of my efforts. That's hard. Uh, that was a hard one to even imagine, um, but I've seen <clears throat> it work in my life <clears throat> even before I came in this program because I was like, uh, why, why isn't it working out the way I wanted it to? So I would be disappointed. So now I just let it go because I have no control over that, over the results. And, um, and that's okay. You know, I have to have the faith in my higher power that that's the way it is. And to work on that, you know, the the basis of, uh, of the um, recovery is acceptance in my experience. So, and experiences constantly reinforce uh, that God is working for me, with me. And um, of myself, I am nothing without my higher power, my new friend, my new friend.
my higher power. So, um, yeah, do my best to learn how to be honest and, uh, and have that humility. So, um, I need to plug in my computer. Otherwise it's gonna, didn't realize I didn't have it <laughs> plugged in. Okay, let's do this. Plug it in. Excuse me one moment. I plug in my computer. All right, so now we'll have time to say the prayer without it being uh, concerned that the computer will stop. All right, let's do this. That's so funny. With the the planetary deal. We have Venus and, and Capricorn today, so that's interesting, right? It's going to start to go in retrograde um, on the 17th, so it's, it's going to revisit all the things that Venus loves, so, you know, it's going to be in some type of a thought process of that, so. All right, yeah, especially when I'm moving. I'm moving on the 16th, so. And uh, when it goes into retrograde on the 17th, I'll probably forget a few things. So then I'll have a couple days to um, make sure that I don't forget the things I love. So, all right, so let's go ahead and say the serenity prayer together. And I'm really grateful that you guys are here and um, I will be here tomorrow. So I hope you are too. And um, the likes have been helping the um, algorithm. <laughs> so other people have found um, this channel and you know, it's uh, your participation, like I said, is just really, it's working. It's really working nicely. So for everyone, it's healing. All right, serenity prayer. So we can start our day at any time. God, Grant us the serenity to accept the things we can't change, to have the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. God's will be done. Keep coming back. It works if you work it. Kitty, she's happy now. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace. Love you.